Hello, everyone. So, I just finished my playthrough of Ether 1, and I wanted to come back and give my thoughts about it. My overall impression is that it's a really good game, and I really enjoyed my experience with it. It wasn't without its, its frustrations, but I really, really liked it. And I just want to say how happy I am that in gaming we're starting to see games like this become pretty uh, popular and common. Games like this and Gone Home... You know, sort of first-person exploration games that really focus on just down-to-earth things, like just people and their lives. It's really nice to see that. Because, you know, in the game industry, a lot of games are about really fantastical things. You know, they're power fantasies, or they're about, you know, space marines or whatnot. They're just not very down-to-earth. In general. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it's nice to have something else. Something that is that is down to earth. Something that's just about people. You know, people and their relationships and who they are and things like that. It's really nice to see that. And it's wonderful to see that games like this are starting to come out. You know, they're first person exploration games. I think a first person exploration game as a kind of I guess genre, you could almost call it, is is such a perfect framework for exploring these things. Because it has a lot of adventure game kind of elements. You know, you're, you're exploring an environment. You're not really in danger. You, you pretty much can't die. In fact, you can't die. I don't believe you can in this game. And you can pick up objects and you can manipulate them. And all that stuff. It's just... It makes for an experience where you can really take your time and really just absorb everything that's around you. And it's wonderful. So I'm really, I'm just really happy that games like this exist. And to talk specifically about this game, I'm really happy that it's really damn good. So let me talk about probably the most immediately obvious thing, and that's the graphics. It's always the first thing you notice. You look at a game and you're staring at the graphics. I really like how Ether One looks. It is gorgeous. I mean, just look at this. Let me get some smooth pans here. Some smooth movements, like this. There we go. No, there, that's better. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, I love what they've done with the graphics. It's not that it's particularly high fidelity. If you get up close to something, I mean, you can see, the textures, they're not particularly high resolution. The models aren't particularly... They don't have a particularly high polygon count. There's something super fancy going on in terms of complexity, but the overall look is just really good. And I think that just comes from... I think that just comes from really good art direction. The graphic style actually kind of reminds me a bit of what you see in... Telltale's The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us series. It reminds me a bit of that, but I think toned down a bit more than what you see in those games. Where it's... It's moderately stylized. You know, it looks a little bit cartoony. Things kind of have a lot of... like, black kind of... not outlines, but... I don't even know how to describe it. It's a bit stylized. But not too much. It doesn't look like, I don't know, World of Warcraft or something. You know, it doesn't look too fantasy. At the same time, it's not just pure realistic, and it makes for a really interesting look. It's refreshing. You know, it's just something different. And it's so beautifully realized. It's just really good looking. So yes, hats off to the developers for the graphics. Beautiful. It runs great, too. I mean, not only does it look great, but it runs really good. I've never, never, ever gone below 60 FPS. Except for the occasional hitch, of course, but... Yeah. Just runs great. Oh, also... I guess kind of when I'm talking about graphics, might as well move on to sound. Sound design is excellent. I'm not sure if you can really hear the footsteps too much. You probably can kind of hear the footsteps. Yeah, it just sounds beautiful. It's got a wonderful soundtrack. It's all sorts of radios and stuff that you can find in the environment and turn them on. It's nice to hear that, too. All the footstep sounds, which are... 
when you're playing a first-person exploration game, or really any sort of an exploration game, where you're generally on your own, it's mostly just you, I, I don't want to underestimate the importance of footstep sounds. Like, I don't think you could underestimate the importance of footstep sounds in such a game, because you're hearing them constantly. Every time you move, you're hearing them. They're really important. And they sound awesome. And the soundtrack is great. And there's all sorts of nice little details, like the sound of the waves lapping against the shore. The sound of bells in the distance. You know, the sound of wind and leaves blowing around and stuff like that. Just wonderful ambience. Ambience. Just, yeah, it's great looking and it's great sounding. Alright, let's talk about the puzzles. So, the developers have chosen to do something pretty interesting that I'm not sure if I've ever seen done before. And if it has been done before, I suppose it's not very common. And that's that... This game has a lot of puzzles, but you don't really need to do them, for the most part. So, there's these ribbons. These ribbons you need to complete the game. You can see I've got all of them. All these cases are filled up. Yeah, that's what you need to complete the game. And I can't quite remember. Maybe there was some very light puzzling needed to actually get all of them. But for the most part, you can get these very easily. But, and those will take you to the end of the story, by the way. So you can complete this game while doing no or very little actual puzzling. However, in addition to that, it does have like real hard puzzles in the form of projectors. You can see right now I've got 12 out of 20, so I finished the game with 12 out of 20. Got a pretty good amount of them. So for example, in the harbor, I have completed the top three, but this last one, the May Day one, which is pretty much the bane of my existence. I'm gonna look that up on a wiki and see how the hell you're supposed to solve it. So the May Day one is, uh, is not completed. So, you're left with the choice of do you want to experience this game just for the story and ignore all the puzzle stuff? Or, you know, are you kind of maybe, I don't know, more hardcore or you just really like doing puzzles? And you can do them. So they're optional. Which is... strange. Let's go back to the harbor. Oh, right, I'm already there. Let me get... Yeah, let me teleport back. There we go. Let me go to the May Day. The incomplete... Uh, Mayday projector. So yes, it's optional, and that's very strange. For one thing, I just want to say, it's an improvement over how most kind of adventure sort of games are. With a lot of adventure games, and I'm starting to get rather cynical about adventure games, I'm sorry to say. But with a lot of adventure games, they have a lot of puzzles, typically. And... Well, you have to... In a standard adventure game, you have to complete the puzzles to move forward with the story. Of course, that's how they've always been, really. And oftentimes, the puzzles don't really make any sense. They're frustrating, they're annoying, and etc., etc. So unfortunately, you're left in the position of having to do those frustrating things to actually move forward in the story, even though you'd rather not even deal with them. So in that way, this is quite nice. If you find the puzzles frustrating, you don't have to do them. So it's definitely an improvement. Because it means if you can't solve something, you haven't hit a brick wall. You can always just go forwards and just pick up the ribbons and don't worry about the puzzles. That's good. However, I think that highlights a bigger problem with a, with kind of adventure type games that have puzzles in them. And that's that oftentimes the puzzles don't have much to do with the story. It's almost as if they exist on two separate layers. It's like they don't really know what they want to be. You know, are, are they about the story or are they a puzzle game? And most adventure games are kind of both and they don't really gel together all that well. You'll have times when you're kind of in a story mode, like, ooh, I'm experiencing a, a narrative here. This is interesting. And then you have other times where it's, oh, now I'm going into puzzle mode. And the story doesn't mean anything. I'm just trying to match this with that and that with this and 
It's like, oh, and now here's a, a story moment, you know. It's like you hit a you hit a wall with a puzzle and you complete it and then there's like another cutscene or it triggers the next conversation, you know. You go back to the story and then there's more time you're spending on puzzles and then after you complete that one, you go to another conversation or it advances the story. So it's kind of these like two separate layers that awkwardly try to coexist. And I feel like they've done a better job in Ether 1 than most adventure games do with that. So not only are the, are the puzzles optional, but the puzzles themselves also do actually have a connection to what you're doing. Because you're, you know, you're a memory restorer. Although I, I guess how much of that, after finishing it, how much of this, how much of um, the framework of what you're doing in this game, of being a memory restorer, and restoring somebody's memories. How much of that is actually true, and how much of it is maybe just imagination or something, I don't know. There's a lot about the story in this game that's definitely up for debate. And I'd like to hear some interpretations about exactly what people think happened. Because, I mean, you are. You, in this game, and in the story, you're dealing with people that have you know, dementia. So, obviously what you're seeing is not necessarily reliable. And that was kind of a tension. What was I originally talking about? Oh yes, adventure game puzzles. So I feel like they do a, be a pretty good job of that here. Not only because they're optional, but also in terms of just making them feel connected with the storyline, because everything you're doing is actually trying to... like, repair a memory. You're trying to reconstruct what actually happened in people's lives. So it does have a connection. It doesn't feel like completely random stuff that you're doing. But at the same time, it doesn't... Eh, it doesn't feel completely connected to me. Here's, I think, where the awkwardness kind of comes in. So... If the puzzles... are really deeply connected with the story... then they should be important, right? And if the puzzles are important and vital... Why are they optional? You get what I'm saying? Like, if, if they really matter, why are they optional? That doesn't really work. And if you're saying they can be optional, if you're saying somebody can complete the game while not paying attention to them, and that's fine, you know, they can just do the ribbons and not do the puzzles at all, and if you think they can actually have a good experience doing that, then what's the point of the puzzles? Like, why are they there? If there's something you can cut out and it's not a big deal, then why are they even there in the first place? It's very strange. Again, it's an improvement over how most adventure games do it, I feel. But at the same time, there's something very strange about it. And the fact that I haven't completed everything. Again, I've got... Let's go back here. I've got 12 out of 20. So I haven't completed all the projectors. And also... There is a safe down here. There's also a safe inside of here that I never opened up. So there's many mysteries that I've left unsolved. Both with the projectors and with the safe, and... I'm sure there's some other stuff, too. So the fact that I haven't completed everything, but I did complete the game. So I completed the game with a little bit more than half of everything, kind of... All the optional stuff done. But... That leaves me in an awkward position. Where here's what I'm left thinking. After finishing it, I'm thinking... If I completed everything, would I have had a different ending? And also, there's some things I don't understand about the story. Precisely what happened is one of them. I get the general idea. There's an, I feel like there's enough of a core to the storyline that I understand, and that's simple enough that I'm not left with no clue as to what actually happened. But, at the same time, I certainly have a lot of questions. Like, does the Ether Institute even exist? You know, the person I'm talking to who keeps talking me through this... my procedures and everything that I'm doing. Phyllis. You know, she actually <laughs> looking out for me? She actually trying to help me? I, I, I don't know. A lot of the information you get, I would say, is unreliable. Not exactly trustworthy. So I've got a lot of questions. And I'm left thinking, would I have had answers to those questions if I had completed all the puzzles? 
And it's kind of unsatisfying. Because then I'm left in the position of thinking... Okay, should I go back and do those puzzles and complete the game again? To see if I miss something? But at the same time, I don't actually want to do those puzzles, because the reason I stopped in the first place is because doing the puzzles turned into a slog. And I wasn't have any, having any fun, and it wasn't satisfying to do them at the end. Even though it started out quite a bit of fun. So I'm left in this very awkward position. Like, if, if they're optional, then are they really important? And if they're really important, why are they optional? And I didn't do them, so did that change the ending? Then is there stuff I really don't understand that I wouldn't understand if I did them, but at the same time, doing them wouldn't be fun, so I have to weigh my desire to know more with my lack of desire to actually do the puzzles? <laughs> so, it's a bit awkward. I don't really know what to make of it. But at the same time, I want to emphasize again, it is quite a bit better than most adventure games do. So I'm happy about that. Let's go somewhere else for a change of scenery. Village? Lighthouse? No. Industrial center is not a very good change of scenery. It's pretty hideous. Let's go to the village. So, yes. A bit strange. But still, the puzzle design overall is pretty good. There's some moments that were really satisfying. Yeah, there's some really good puzzles. I'll just say that outright. There's some really good puzzles. They just make sense. Everything clicks. It's satisfying. It's interesting to do. And... There's some others that aren't so much. Especially the ones here in the village. Near the end of the game. I'm not, I'm not really sure what happened hey, with the puzzles here. Why was the sand wet? Because the seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm not really sure what happened with the puzzles at the end here. I don't know if it's just because I was getting tired of doing them. Or if it was because maybe they ramped up the difficulty towards the end. But even though I was able to get most of the projectors in the previous places, I was only able to get one out of, I think, five here. And I'm left with no clue as to how to do the others. So some of them, like these, eh, I don't really like them. And there are some puzzles that don't give you a lot of feedback as to what's actually happened. Like, you do something, and I'm, I'm not exact... Sometimes I wasn't sure what had actually happened when I did that step. Like, I, it sounded like something opened up or whatnot. And I wasn't sure what had actually opened. And things like that. So the puzzles certainly run the gamut. From... Really good to not so good, but overall, I would say they're quite good. Oh yes, I also want to mention that the voice acting is exceptional. It's really, really good. There's not too much of it. There's not really that many characters, but... What is there is very, very good. And I just want to bring it back around... To the story. Yeah, let's talk about the story. Without getting into any spoilers, don't worry. Just in case you haven't uh, finished the game or seen anybody finish it. So again, it's a game that's very down-to-earth. It's about people. I would say it's about... Uh, you could say it's about... Identity. Love and... Loss. I suppose hey, you could say. I've got another one. Why was Six scared? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable. Um, yeah, it's about it's about people, and their identities and who they are as a person, connections you form with other people. It's about things like that. It's down to earth, and that's again, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to see that a uh, game tackle something so simple and human. I really, really like that. It's one of my favorite things in games because it's so relatively rarely been touched upon. And the story is really damn good. Actually, I want to mention something about the story in relation to the puzzles as well that I just remembered I wanted to mention, and that's that another kind of strange thing about if you decide to do the puzzles, which I did for the most part, is that when you do the puzzles, you end up switching kind of into puzzle mode. And I, w I wasn't thinking about the narrative too much. And 
Because it took me a while to do the puzzles, I ended up in situations where I learned something new about the storyline. In kind of the main part of the game, and then I did a puzzle. And then I came back to the main storyline. And because in between the main storyline, I had been thinking about many other things. I've been thinking about how to solve the puzzle, and I was... You know, each puzzle is kind of its own little mini-universe that you kind of have to think about. And because I'd been thinking about so many things in between knowing more about the story, it made it hard for me to remember what had actually been happening in the storyline. Which was a bit awkward. So I honestly think if you don't do the extra puzzles and you just focus on the main storyline, the story would probably have more emotional impact, I think. The pacing of it would certainly be better. But anyway, it's just connected to what I was saying, but back to the main point of what I was saying. The storyline is very human. And it's wonderful. It's really well told, and it's really emotional. It made me think about... identity. About what makes me, you know, what makes a person... themselves. What makes me me. You know, my collection of memories. The people that I know. And I start thinking, what if I just forgot that? Like, what if I woke up tomorrow and I just didn't remember my family or who I was? And that's terrifying. It honestly, thinking about that freaking petrified me. It is incredibly terrifying to think about that. Losing the things that make you, you. So it actually prompted me to think about those things. And again, I think that's wonderful. It's very, very cool. So, there you have it. I think that pretty well sums up my major thoughts about Ether 1. In the end, I would summarize it as a beautiful looking and beautiful sounding game that has puzzle design that is much better than most games. But at the same time, it's kind of awkward and it doesn't quite work for me. But nonetheless, it's pretty damn good. And it's got a very down-to-earth story that is really, really emotional and well told. So, there you have it. Let me go back to the harbor. There we go. I really enjoyed my time with this. With this game. I really did. It's just, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Some things about it that I didn't like, but I'm so glad I got it and played it and experienced it. It's something I'm not going to soon forget. It's beautiful. Not just graphically, but just, it's a beautiful work of art. I love it. I can't wait to see what the developers do next as well. So let's end with a beautiful scene. Let's see, this is a nice little woodsy area. Here we go. This is pretty beautiful. Yeah. Wait a minute. There might be there might be a spot that's 10% more beautiful over here. Is it beautiful or over here? Hmm. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, okay, let's get some good framing here. I'm not really a photographer though, so maybe my framing isn't too good. Uh, uh, I like the book being in the frame, it's nice. Rule of thirds or something, that's a thing, I think. There we go, yeah, that's nice looking. So, I'm going to end with this scene, the wonderful sound of the water going on by. So yeah, Ether 1. It's got some problems, but I freaking love it. It's a really beautiful game.